Hello and welcome back to another brand new episode of the Moto3 Crime Mode. And today we'll have episode 15. We're getting on we're near the end of the season. Today we'll be at Mazzano, one of my favourite tracks. Can we keep our momentum going? Let's find out. So you join me here for my one and only lap in qualifying. It is grey and dull in Mazzano, not the usual weather you would have on this side of the world. Brilliant track. Very difficult track on a Moto3 bike. A lot of uh, quick direction changes along with the last sector, the actual last two sectors, fast right into a tight sector and then a double left to finish the lap. I hope to have good pace for this track. I really do like it, but it is, like I said, it is tricky. We are half a second over alone in sector one, so probably the trickiest sector on the track for me personally is the first sector and I lost a lot of time on it into a heavy braking zone down into the off camber turn eight run it wide get a poor exit I have to sit up and screw it off not the way you want to ride a motor three bike coming down into turn 10 and we've actually gained back half a second we're almost bang on Darren Binder's time so we made up time in that sector even though we had a poor sector now this part of the track you can gain so much time if you're brave up into sixth gear we're going to be flat through Carvono out to the curbs been on these side sands here in real life great bit of track to watch from now through turn 13 into this tricky right hand turn here and we're just on schedule for front row but it looks with half a tent over can we make up time in the last sector and get another pole it would be ideal to start this race from the front difficult track to pass we come into the last corner Mizano corner, I get it a bit, a bit wrong, slow entry, poor exit, up to the line, can we get pole? Yes we can, by half a second. So Darren Binder second, and uh, Jeremy Alcoba third, rolls out the front row. So another pole position, dull and grey once again in Mizano. Poor start for me, I get a bit of a wheelie off the line. And you can see already down to P4. I'm probably going to lose more positions into turn 1. And Tonelli slides up the inside. I get a slap from Messia. I have to take a tight line through turn 2 to avoid the rest of the field. As I go around to the outside of a gas gas that would have been Sergio Garcia. And I get a massive lunge into the back of Antonelli. As I get tagged again from behind. He managed to hold around the outside somehow. Very, very good riding from Antonelli to stay on my outside after me. Just tagging his rear. Mino in his home Grand Prix down in 8th. Not where he'll want to be. He'll want to be at the sharp end. Like myself. As we come down into turn 8. I run it slightly wide again. Just struggling in the opening. A few corners here of the first lap to get the bike stopped. Side by side with Antonelli. Can I get him into this tricky right hander? It's a double corner. Just take it tight. And Anthony again goes for the outside line. Is he still there? He's just about there. I'm going to tuck into a slipstream. Just get in behind him. Go to the outside and see can I get a good run. And maybe get him into the tight right hander at the end of these fast rights. He actually he's actually quite slow through. And I managed to go around the outside into the first right hander. Will he fight back? I go wide. Oh, off the track wide. I'm going to have to be careful rejoining. Surprised I didn't get a track limits warning there. Probably should have. Didn't gain much of an advantage, but I didn't lose as much as if I slowed down to try and stay on track. Now we're up with our championship challenger, John McPhee. Actually managed to pass him once again. He's still there though. Just up my inside. Now he's tucked in behind me in my slipstream. There's the end lap one in P9, so poor start for me. Struggling as John McPhee once again absolutely clatters into the side of me. I thought we, as I shake the head in frustration at him, I thought we had learned from Silverstone. But not again. Slamming into the side of me, no respect from the Scot. And I'm down now to just, just inside the points. So, hoping to win here today and already it looks like it's going to be an uphill task. To P13. Some long side, Sasaki just got a bit of drive onto him. So I'm onto the back of John McPhee again. Will be able to pick him off. I go for a late breaking mark around the outside. 
he managed to take a tighter line, better line. Now, will I get a good drive up into turn nine and ten? And go to the outside again. Try and maybe cut it back underneath him. Now, in defensive position, well. Oh, as I touched the white line there, and I get a small bit of a tank slapper. But now, along this short straight into the fast right, so I got a small bit of slipstream off John McPhee. Hold on to the car, really upsetting the bike. It's actually pushed me way wide. I've lost all my drive, but thankfully Sasaki and Guevara behind me were battling among each other and didn't pass. And again, as Sasaki goes up my inside, tucks the front and pushes me off the track. What a crazy move that from Sasaki. Up the inside, I must have, I don't know what he had ideas of there because he was never going to pass me through there. 140 miles an hour, I think that corner is. And he just tucked the front and slid into the side of me. I had to pick the bike up off track and I've got my first track limits warning. So end of lap two. And I have a track limits warning and I'm down in 12. So not an ideal start to this Mizano Grand Prix in San Marino. I have work to do here to get back to the high points paying positions. So yeah, poor start from me. Uh, I'm in hot again. Cannot get this bike stopped for some reason. The cooler conditions, maybe extra fuel on board. I'm not sure exactly why, but I'm struggling to get the bike down to the apex. Now I need to just put in a good, good lap here and get myself back onto the 11 bike train up ahead. And see, can I start pick my way off as I did at Aragon and a few other races this season? McPhee's on my outside. I've actually managed to get a good drive up the inside and pass him. So coming into turn 9 here, I do have the position of McPhee. Is he going to fight back? Doesn't look like it. I'm going to try to take a tighter line compared to Finati. And I've actually managed to pass him as well. So it seems to be getting great drive. As we're into the top 10 again. Now I just hopefully need to stay in it this time, not fall out. Much better this time through the fast rights through Trebone and turn 12. Come down into this, I love this corner here. Caro, they call it. So Toba just up ahead, Toba and Mino. Slightly wide there myself, actually. So a much, much better lap this time around for me. Managed to pick up a few positions and steady the ship a small bit. As we set the fastest, I so would have fastest man on track, not surprising. I've had very good pace all weekend. Just in the race for the first two laps, I was pretty slow and making many, many mistakes. But there's just a big group up as I get a great drive on Kite Toba. I actually hit the back of him. I got such a good drive. Let's go through Rio. And then turn five now onto the back straight here. Can I get a good drive and get past? Maybe into turn seven. I get a great run around the outside of Kaito Toba and onto the back of Antonelli. Can I get him into turn eight? Again, I go for the outside line. Actually, got it wrong again. But I probably should hold as Toba gets alongside me, but I should get him just about called him. Yeah, just about kept on the inside of him. So I can just just about see the leaders as Toba is having a great battle here with me. He keeps passing me back. My own fault. I keep making silly mistakes. Let's get a good slipstream off to Antonelli. I'm going to have to go to the outside and tip in across his nose. 130 miles an hour through that corner. Flat on a Moto3 bike. So sitting currently in P8. Sergio Garcia on the gas gas up ahead. A nice train has built up here. Turn 15, I got that wrong again. Now we're coming up to half race distance. We're just slightly over it now. I'm still just a bit further back than I want to. If I start picking places this lap now, I'll need to get a move on if I want to at least get a podium out of it. Oh, I thought I was going to get a, a track limits one there. It looked like I was going to set a wheel onto the dirt. But I managed to survive. I still hold the fastest lap. So I still show good pace. I just need to be more consistent. Once again, massively in hot there. So it looks like I can do two poor laps, one good lap. And then I'm on to make mistakes again. 
Got a good drive that time though. I would have written that's a track limit 20. Very frustrating. To go for the outsider move. And we actually get this one pulled down. Sergio Garcia, a little timid under braking. Now, can I get Mino? Make another pass. I go to the outside once again. Brake late. And he's actually just sat me up mid corner. I'm going to try and cut underneath him. Hopefully get a good drive out. Maybe small bit of slipstream. Just on his outside. So, not making much progress. He's going to lead. Possibly through... Carvono got a great run up onto the back of him and Alcoba Mino's actually just picked Alcoba in the middle corner and I've made a big mistake once again running off at the fast right handers I managed to hold my position and didn't get a track limit running but I come back on track and Sergio Garcia went for the move I was hoping he didn't but he stuck it up there and I, I kind of gave him nowhere to go and I gave myself nowhere to go he was being a bit optimistic after me coming back on track. Maybe I could have given, I probably should have given him more room, but yeah, an unfortunate error there for me, and it's cost Garcia in this race, and it's opened up a big gap. As I've made another mistake, mistakes all over the place. It's another track limits warning. As McPhee gets back in front of me, I'm having a poor race here at a track I usually go so well at. John McPhee's on my outside. I've actually got him again. Another battle again with John McPhee. All race long we've been fighting him. So I have about a second and a half up the road. And that's another track that I was running at this rate. I'm going to penalise myself with a, a long lap penalty. I have two and a half laps left. I need to keep it clean here. Or else I'll be more than likely out of the points. Which from starting on pole position would be a nightmare. So, can I get onto it? There's a group of six riders up in front. If I could get onto them, I could just about pick my way onto the podium. But it's not going to be easy. John McPhee is falling back, so I'm falling into a bit of a gap here. Gap in front, gap behind. So, um, yeah. Could be a lonely seven position here if I can't get my pace up. And if I can't get onto the back of the six in front. Through the fast rights, I've managed to take about half a second out of them, and they don't seem so far in front anymore, about 0.7 of a second. So we come through, we got that corner much better this time. Starting to feel a bit better on the bike now, this lap. Ooh, that could have been close, that could have been the penalty that would have cost me any points in this race. That could have been the long lap penalty. Cross the line, and we almost equal our own fastest lap of the race, so once again, we somehow managed to find pace. And we're pulling away back onto the group. Let's get a good run through turn three. Now we just need to make sure I hit my braking marker coming into this corner here. I've been laid on the brake every time in here, and most times I got it wrong. This time, perfect. And we're with the group. Jeremy Alcoba just ahead. Can I get a good run up into this corner here? Turn eight. I get a good sip stream. I go to the outside of Alcoba and that is P6 for me I go for the outside again bouncing on the curb will I be able to keep Mino at bay he's managed to sneak past me again I get a good drive though and I'll go to the outside again I keep getting caught with the same lines every lap and I've actually managed to switch it up the inside I'm managing up the inside of Mino can I pick him up he's still just on my outside I think I just would have the position Small bit of slipstream from Gabby Rodrigo in fourth. And I get a great run of him up into P4 as I come into Carvono. Or Corvone, as I think it's pronounced. As we fly through these fast rights, I've made many mistakes here. And again, I'm massively wide. I have to break that. I had, ooh, once again, cutting it very fine with the track limits. If I was a foot onto the left there, that would have been my race over. And we're sitting pretty now in P5. Rodrigo Binder, Pedro Costa, and Messia are the four men ahead of me. As we come on to the last lap, a podium is definitely on the cars. As I said again, another quick lap, keeping in the woman of 44s. So if I want to win this race, I have to pass four riders on this last lap. 
two of them championship contenders two of them have been very strong throughout the year but have been inconsistent so once again breaking late getting it stopped though is the main thing can't afford any mistakes on the slap so I get a, actually get a great run I open up turn 6 then I get a great run on Gabby Rodriguez I get a massive slipstream up into power 3 a margin on full will I be able to get Binder into turn 8 I just about think I can he's holding around the outside and he's done very well to stop it there for the first time all race I've gone to the inside and still couldn't get it done but I might just have the inside coming up Will I be able to get up inside? I'm going to go up his inside and try and sit him up. And looks like we've managed to get the move done. He's still there though. Yeah, he's in the slipstream of Acosta. Side by side action on the final lap here of the Mizano Grand Prix. Just about going to have the inside for Corona. Now can I get the Red Bull Ios? They're pushing each other. Will there be a move, a dive into the next right hander here? I'm close enough. Will I go for it? It's been blocked off by Acosta. He tried the exact move and stopped me from doing it. I go to the outside. They're on my inside now. Can I drag him to the line? Can I get him into the last corner? They're too wide. Three wide. That's never going to work. I squeeze it to the inside. Looks like I've got a brilliant drive. I'm currently second. I can't see where he is. And I've actually managed to take the lead across the line. And I've managed to win it. Somehow. So you can see I won by 0 0.04 of a second. Brings my lead at the top of the championship to 11 points here at the podium. So that has been it today for episode 15 of the Motor 3 Grey Mode. A brilliant race in Mizano. Hectic race for me. I was all over the place for most of it. Somehow managed to get out with 25 points in the bag. Next up is Mategi, one of my least favourite tracks. So hopefully we can battle at the front and at least bring it home on the podium for that to keep a good hold of my championship lead. So thanks again for watching. I shall see you in the next video. Thanks again and take care.